part of the adventure of Illustrator is trying to figure out where they've hidden everything. And Adobe does a great job of hiding all this power in the panels. If you're a new user and you're sitting there going, what are the panels? Well, you better learn fast because I'm telling you, if you don't know how to use the panels, and if you don't know where to look for the panels, and if you don't know what they do, you just aren't going to get very far in this program. So watch this lesson. Don't turn it off yet because it's really important. Over here on the right, you'll see a bunch of panels. Aha! They're icons right now. But if I click on one, aha, out pops this panel. This is the swatches panel, or the brushes panel, or the symbols panel, or the color panel. You get it? The transparency panel. All right? Now, right now, they're only icons. And if you're brand new to Illustrator, this probably means nothing to you. And if I said something like, hey, go to the swatches panel, you're like, I don't know which is the swatches panel. So I'm going to suggest that you move your cursor over the left edge of this row of icons, and you'll see it turns into these two little arrows. And watch, I can drag this out, and now I have the names of these panels. Now when I say go to the swatches panel, there it is, and you can read that. Okay. Now I might mention a panel that's not even listed there. Well, now what do you do? Well, all the panels are listed under Window, every single one of them. They're all right there. And look down here, there's the tools, that's these, that's the tools panel. Control panel, that's what's across the top here, okay. Application bar, that's across the top there, all right. And all the panels that we're going to use for the various things in Illustrator are listed right here. It's beyond the scope of this lesson to go panel by panel and tell you what each one does. There are individual lessons for that. What I want to teach you in this lesson is how to use the panels and how to access them and how to work with the panels themselves. So that when somebody says, hey, I want to teach you how to use the aligned panel, you already know how to work with panels. You just need to learn what the panel does specifically for creating that art. So let's do that. Let's start with learning about where they are. Again, they're under the window, drop down menu, and they're in alphabetical order. So if I say, hey, go to the aligned panel, there it is. All right, go to the links panel, there it is. All right. You'll notice that some of these actually have a little triangle over here to the right, and that flies out even more options. So under type are character, glyphs, paragraph, tabs. Okay. Now that doesn't mean this is necessarily the only place you can find this. For example, there's glyphs right here. There's also glyphs under the type drop-down menu. That's the same thing. Whether you do it here or whether you do it here doesn't matter. I don't want to confuse you. All I want to say is that if you just absolutely don't know where to look, it's going to be right here under Windows somewhere. Okay? Just a matter of knowing where to look for that. All right. So let's click on the Swatches panel, and let's look at the anatomy of a panel. You'll see we have the tab, which we can use to drag that panel out if we want, or drag it back in and nest them with these other panels so we can customize how our panels are. And let me give you an example of how we might do that. Notice the Align panel is not here. So if I go to Window Align, it pops it out here, and there we go. We've got Transform, Align, and Pathfinder all nested together. If I only want the Align panel, I can grab that by the tab and drag it right in there, and there it is. Or maybe I want all three of these. I can grab the bar that runs across them and drag it underneath there, and now you can see that all three of them are nested together. So that allows me to bring out the panels that I want to use on a regular basis. If I really like a certain arrangement of panels, it's probably a good idea to go to Window Workspace and save that workspace so that if things ever get messed up, you can always go to Window Workspace, your workspace, and it will clean it up. For now, I'm going to leave it just as it is right here. So let's go back to Swatches because it's a great example of a typical panel. In the bottom right corner, I can expand this. Why would I want to do that? Well, notice there's a lot of dead space here, so you're thinking, why would I make it bigger than I need? That's a valid question. Well, if I go up here to the top right corner of this panel, we have a panel menu. This is huge. I can't tell you how often people ask me, hey, where is insert your own function here? Okay, And I say, oh, well, it's in the panel menu of the insert panel name here. So like, for example, hey, where is create a new swatch. Well, it's in the panel menu of the swatches panel. There it is, new swatch. Duplicate the swatch. 
select all the unused swatches. The list goes on and on, and we're not going to go over all these functions of the panels. The point is that when looking at this panel, it doesn't look like it does much. You'll see there are a lot of options there that you can choose from. Along the bottom of most of the panels are certain icons. For example, this trash can is on all of them. So if I select this swatch, for example, and I click on the trash can, I've just deleted that. If I want to create a new swatch, that's this little square with the corner folded up. That's the new swatch. Look at that icon here and look at it in the Layers panel. Guess what? That's the new Layers icon. It's the new Graphic Styles icon. It's the, hmm, Radian doesn't have one. But Brushes does, Symbols does, Swatches does. So whenever you see that icon, it is the new whatever panel you're on. Trash can is obviously delete, no matter what panel you're on. Each panel might have unique icons, and if you don't know what it is, just put your cursor over it for a second. It'll say, New Color Group. Look right here. New Color Group. So you could do it either way. It doesn't matter. It's whichever you prefer. You like icons? Click there. You like menu items? Choose there. The point is that the panels have these menus. Let's go to the Align panel, and let's click on the menu of that, and you'll see Show Options. Now, that may not seem like a big deal. I'm going to tell you that I see this everywhere in the Adobe world where they hide things from us. And we click show options and wait a second, now we have more choices here than what we had before. So I strongly recommend you get in the habit of choosing the show options you ever see it. That way you get the fully expanded panel and you get all the functionality that it offers. Again, if you don't know what an icon is, just sit there for a second and oh, that's horizontal little line center. Okay, I get that. Right, so you can learn what that is. Now, up here across the top is our control panel. Now, I want to go up here under Window, Type, Character. And here's our Character panel. Now, if you look at this and you don't know any better, you're a brand new user, you're looking at this and you see that you can choose the typeface, family, the face, the size, the letting, and that's it. Those are your choices. But look here, Show Options. Wait a second, that's what I was just telling you about. Show Options. If I choose that, now look. Horizontal, vertical scaling, baseline shift, underline, strike through. We have all these choices just by choosing show options. Also in that menu is all caps, small caps, superscript, subscript. And we wouldn't have those options if we didn't know to click here and either show the options here or choose from the menu. We have to do that. If we don't, we're not getting the most out of the application. So your homework assignment is to open all these panels and memorize. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave that here for just a second because I'm going to add some type to this document and I want you to see something. So let's just type something. S-O-M-E-T-H-I-N-G. Okay. And right here it says character. And that's the character panel. Now I could change the size here. Let's go ahead and do that. 48 point. There we go. I could change it up here in the control bar. Go to 60 point. Watch this. If you ever see a word in blue like stroke, character, paragraph, flash text, opacity, align, transform, any of those. If you click on it, look what happens. It launches the fully expanded panel. Look, they're identical. What that means is that in Illustrator today, you may not need to have all of your panels here or even out because they're accessible when you need them. Right now, I need my character panel. Yes, I have these choices, but I want more choices. If I click on character, now I have all of my choices. I want to show you one other difference here. This says Myriad Pro. I'm going to change the family. Notice that I only have the name of the font here. That's all I have. Notice that if I click on the character link to launch the panel, and I choose this, look at that. Now I've got the preview of the font, and I can choose it that way. So this link gives us the full functionality instead of going window type character or the shortcut command T, I can just click quickly, do what I need. Let me change the type size to 60 point. And when I go back to work, notice that the panel disappears automatically. I want to do some paragraph, launch it. If I go back to my art, it disappears. So these links up here give us the panels temporarily, and it gives us all the functionality of the panel temporarily. So how do you want to work with panels? That's up to you. You can launch them here, 
and nest them over here if you want them permanent, or just have them out, and when you're done with them, delete them, or certain panels are available on an as-needed basis by simply clicking on the link, and it's available to you there, and then when you work again, it will disappear. No matter how you use panels, though, I can't stress enough, you need to learn them, learn what they do, learn what those menu items are, and that will really make you an Illustrator Power User.